they're fixing to discuss something that before I do before they do I'd like to say something to my viewers real quick in regards to and towards all this this woman that they're talking about I don't know who she is I don't know what she stems her information from but I know for a fact that the evil demonic world is real and I know for a fact that it's powerful now just because I know that it's powerful does not mean that it's more powerful than God but what she's talking about is actually factual and if you'll go back into the Bible you will find that sorcery has been a powerful powerful movement going back thousands and thousands of years ago that now since the last days has occurred they realize that their time is short and they're rising up in great wrath simply because they know that their time is short yesterday I was engaged with two police officers in O'Brien County over on the other side of Kenton Tennessee because of an individual that saw me sitting out in the parking lot decided that he was going to use vigilante tactics towards hounding me down and telling me that I had no business being out in that particular neighborhood this particular individual claims that there has been an assortment of crimes committed over into that area pertaining to robberies but I had been embarked or been engaged upon to a family of a little woman who took a lot of interest in me who had told me some things that had bothered me pertaining to her son-in-law or her future son-in-law and one of her daughters sure enough her words was true of me being threatened yesterday by this particular individual that I'm not going to mention their names right now on none of my um, YouTube platforms but I tried to contact her this afternoon give or take around four o'clock and I found out that she was in the emergency uh, surgery proceedings down in Jackson Tennessee where last night she had gotten up about one o'clock to check on one of the animals and somebody had spilt a bunch of dog food whether or not it was purposely or unpurposely spilt a bunch of dog food to the point that she hit the dog food and slipped and fell and basically broke her hip whenever this woman talks about these evil demonic spirits that is out to kill steal and destroy that's exactly what they what they're out doing they're doing their very job that they was ordered to do thousands and thousands of years ago not only are they ordered to to kill steal and destroy but they're ordered to deceive and cause people to become blinded to the degree that they do not understand or know what's going on with the surroundings around them so as you watch this particular program pertaining to Donald Trump keep in mind whenever you're dealing with the supernatural unless you have personally dealt with the supernatural on one side or the other odds are you're going to be in doubt pertaining to the supernatural unless you have had an engagement with the supernatural in which I have on both sides so please listen to this as you use your own judgment and rather not this is factual or unfactual thank you very much for your time one person who attended an outdoor graduation ceremony tested positive. Today, the vice president, who has pushed for the reopening of in-person classes, visiting a private elementary school in North Carolina, where teachers and students wore masks, taking off his mask for a time to talk to kids. We really do believe it's in the best interest of our children to be back in the classroom. Education Secretary Betsy DeVos acknowledged... See, I want to contradict what the vice president just said it's in the best interest of our children to be engaged in a learning 
establishment so that they can properly plan for the future. And just because you're in a learning engagement does not necessarily mean that you have to be embarked up onto a classroom to where you are purposely putting yourself and others in danger. The people here in America are not handling this coronavirus correctly and it's very obvious whenever you have the US debts now over over a hundred fifty thousand and you have no national plan of reopening up these schools such as America is facing as of right now today which is I think give or take the 29th of July 2020 so when you're dealing with blinded people that the Bible talks about that if the blind shall lead the blind they both shall lead it off into the ditch you're going to have these type of deadly affairs that even become more deadly once more the witch story pertaining to the warlocks and the witches pertaining to sorcery is in fact very real and keep in mind that this has invadated this particular nation over here and not only in our books but in our culture in our Hollywood manuscripts in our movies pertaining to Ouija boards and paranormal behavior so what is going on right now in America from A to Z is in fact a movement by these deep dark demonic spirits that is bringing that much more horror into people's lives and if it's not happening in the form of a disease it's happening in the form of just like I got through talking about an elderly lady who knew that something was wrong with that relationship and she was frightened to death afraid that either her son-in-law or future son-in-law or one of her daughters was planning her demise and I questioned her about that a few days ago and she said well they may get me but I'm gonna try to get them before they get me so she knew what was going on in that relationship towards them remaining and staying in that house a matter of fact the law had been called twice on this particular family yesterday before I ever engage with two deputies over in the same area within a half a mile from this particular house because of this woman the elderly woman wanting these people out she wanted she felt that her life was in danger and now sudden all of a sudden she gets up and walks into a booby trap to the point that little round dots of dog food are mysteriously laying all over the floor and she hits it and loses her balance and breaks her hip so sad so sad and like I said if you're not wise enough to figure out what's going on in these regards and of course I'm sure that the son-in-law and the daughters are the daughter that's living there in the same house I'm sure that they're going to be in total denial. All oh, the dog food just mysteriously got spilt, didn't it? Uh-huh. Right. Sure it did. In other words, of all nights for it to be spilt, it was last night during the proceedings of the law coming out there to that particular home twice in addition to me running into the deputies within a half a mile because I was worried to death over this elderly lady. She was trying to give me signals in her despair in what that she was dealing with and I was hoping yesterday that the couple would have gotten moved out of the house to the point that the elderly lady could have had some peace of mind. Could have had um, some resolvement of this situation. But I see, after making the telephone call, I didn't get there quick enough to rescue her. So sad. There is no national plan for schools. There's not a national superintendent, nor should there be. Therefore, there's not a national plan for reopening. Nor should there be. 
Okay. Here in Miami-Dade County, the nation's fourth largest school district, they'll begin the school year with online learning. Same with other major cities throughout Florida, but some, some school districts will be starting with in-person classes, something that the governor has continually pushed for. Just today, he said if his kids were old enough, he'd have no problem sending them back to school. David. All right, Victor Kendo leading us off. Victor, thank you. Tonight, President Trump once again saying he supports that controversial doctor who said masks don't work and who pushed hydroxychloroquine along with the president, even though his own team of advisors and doctors have said it's ineffective and dangerous for treating COVID-19. That doctor has said in the past that demons and witches have caused illnesses. Well, tonight, Joe Biden taking aim, saying the doctor is an absolute disgrace and a key supporter of President Trump, a congressman tonight, has now tested positive for the virus just before he was going to board Air Force One. ABC's Mary Bruce on it all. President Trump today doubled down on his support for a fringe doctor who's spreading lies about the coronavirus, even after learning she claims demons and witches cause illnesses. I was very impressed by her. Now, nothing about her. I had never seen her before. But certainly you can put her up and let her have a voice. Trump had retweeted a video of that doctor denouncing the use of masks and promoting hydroxychloroquine, even though the nation's top health officials warned the anti-malaria drug is ineffective at treating COVID-19 and potentially dangerous. Joe Biden today urged the president to knock it off. President Trump should stop tweeting and start doing something about it, damn it, and stop going Amen. out and talking about this crazy woman he talked about last night about who's an absolute disgrace. One of the people who spread that misleading video, the chief of staff for Republican Congressman Louis Gohmert. Today, Gohmert announced he's tested positive himself. I'm asymptomatic. I don't have any of the symptoms that are listed as part of COVID-19. The congressman has frequently been spotted on the Hill without a mask. Sources tell us his staff has even been scolded for wearing them. Masks really complicate things. This is the first time in American history when we have punished or restricted people who were not sick. Just yesterday, he was seen walking alongside Attorney General Bill Barr, neither of them in a mask. Barr's staff says the Attorney General is now getting tested. The congressman sat for hours in two separate hearings yesterday. Tonight, senior lawmakers from both parties going into quarantine. Gomert himself only learned he was positive because he was required to take a test before he was set to fly with the president. Now that I apparently have it, I will be very, very careful to make sure I don't give it to anybody else. Today, as he prepared to drive to Texas to self-quarantine, Gomert promised to wear a mask, quote, religiously. All right, so let's get to Mary tonight because we know moments ago, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. See how their opinion and their attitude changes real quick? Once they identify that this that this uh, mysterious disease is really real, now you can put it on whatever level that you want to put it on. You can put it on a biological level, or you can put it on a supernatural, spiritual level. But the fact of the matter is, the disease is real, and it's happening, even as I sit and speak. Just like the demonic forces in this world are real. And a lot of times you can't see the demons, you can't hear the demons, you can't smell the demons, you can't hear the demons, you can't even, a lot of people can't even detect the demons. But what you can do is see the repercussions or the damage from the demons. Once more, the Bible is very clear towards stating the fact that Satan would, would like to sift us as wheat if we are a true, born-again, believing Christian society or family. But if we, as a Christian society family, are close enough to the Father, the Father would take care of us, we will be in the hollow hand of God, and God will make sure that we go ahead and fulfill our purpose, or our destiny, even though Satan would like to see all of us drop dead immediately. Because once more, he's lashing out just as the scriptures teaches that in the last days he will lash out in great wrath because he knoweth his time is short. We as a Christian society are going to have to become adapted to these clever, clever attacks that only come from a demonic source 
that we know that did not come from a godly source because God is not the one that's out to kill, steal, and destroy. We know that this is of an evil demonic source. As far as the medication goes, you know, I don't know nothing about that. Once more, I'm not a scientist. I'm not a doctor. I can only tell you that Donald Trump swears by this particular medication, and I'm sure there's probably others out there in addition to this woman that does believe in the supernatural, obviously, that believes the same way that Donald Trump believes in this particular drug. Why the medical industry has not deemed this particular drug as it being essential or as it being uh, a, a, a fighting force against this particular uh, disease, I don't know. I can't answer that question. Once more, I'm not a scientist or a doctor. But I do know this whenever it comes to the supernatural. I can validate without a doubt that the evil demonic world is real, it's clever, it's powerful, it's demented, it's um, very clever in these last days. And if you as a born-again Christian want to remain a born-again Christian in this lifetime, you must remain close to the Heavenly Father in allowing for the Holy Spirit to guide you and direct you in these dark moments that we're in right now in the degree of detecting what's actually going on. Just like God led me into knowing what was going on with the sister over in Kenton, Tennessee that now is in the hospital fixing to get operated on for a broken hip because of suddenly, mysteriously, there was dog food laying where it shouldn't have been laying that she hit and lost her balance and fell. See now announcing anyone on the House floor must wear a mask. And Mary, you reported there tonight that Joe Biden is taking aim again at the president and his handling of the pandemic, but Biden making news himself overnight uh, after that image appeared of his own notes while speaking to reporters before we came on the air last night. In those notes, we could all see the talking points on Senator Kamala Harris. A lot of people are trying to read the tea leaves in the last 24 hours. David, photographers there getting a glimpse of Biden's notes yesterday and right there on top, talking points about Senator Kamala Harris, Biden's former rival, now under consideration to be his running mate. And the first note there saying, quote, do not hold grudges. Biden says he will make his choice next week. David. Mary Bruce on the campaign trail. Mary, thank you. We turn next here tonight to the move involving 12,000 U.S. troops. The Pentagon transferring those troops from Germany, a key U.S. ally. There has been immediate reaction to this tonight. And a new interview with the president after reports Russia allegedly paid bounties to the Taliban for the killing of U.S. troops in Afghanistan. The president was asked about his recent call with Vladimir Putin and whether the safety of our troops was brought up. Here's Terry Moran. Tonight, once more, we're living just as the book, the book of life says that in the last days perilous times will come. And if it doesn't come in one form, it's coming in another form. And if it doesn't come in that form, it's coming in another form. We as a Christian society have been under attack here in America for quite some time. I'm going to say ever since 9-11 it has really been turned way up, the dial has been turned way up towards the Christian community or communities being under attack. Now, more so than ever, 19 years later after 9-11, we as a Christian society can see this siege that we are having to deal with and if there's ever been a time that we needed to pray for our leaders and pray for our troops and pray for the existence of America pertaining to our democracy and pray for one another. It is now. It is now. It is during this time of, of siege. It is during this time of war that has broken out, not just on a physical level, not just on a monetary economical level, but on every level imaginable. We can see where the, where the uh, dark demonic forces 
are trying to infiltrate and bring that much more horror and grief to the homo sapien society and they're basically using listen to me they're basically using this particular moment in crying out throughout the black race that black lives matter they're not actually saying black lives matter they're actually saying our lives matter our lives matter by using the black lives matter movement because these evil demonic spirits knows that they have failed in this contest. And they know that according to the Bible, it's just a matter of time before the piper is fixing to have to pay. He's fixing to have to pay. And they know it. They feel it. They sense it. They understand it. And they know that hell and fire and, and destruction is falling upon to their existence to where they will no longer have the free reins of being able to influence humanity. They will no longer be able to have the free reins of being able to be influential in the eyes of society. Whenever God the Father calls down the rest of the holy angels to encaptivate and eradicate these particular evil demonic figures they will come to their demise they will come to their Achilles heel and because they know it they are leaking lurching they are basically using the homo sapien race such as they have never been known of using the homo sapien race before in bringing destruction upon the humanity such as humanity has never ever seen which is nothing more than a fulfillment of biblical bible prophecy coming true towards that in the last days they will rise up they will rise up in great wrath so please Please pray for our United States troops. After those reports that Russia might have been paying bounties to the Taliban to kill U.S. troops in Afghanistan, President Trump admitting in an interview with Axios that he never even raised the matter in a call with Vladimir Putin last week. We discussed numerous things. We did not discuss that, no. And you never discussed it with him? I have never discussed it with him, no. Trump also denied he'd heard anything about the bounties, despite reports the intel did make it into the president's daily brief. It never reached my desk. You know why? Because they didn't think it was intelligence. They didn't think it was real. It was they in your written think, brief. Uh, they didn't think it was worthy of it. I wouldn't mind. If it reached my desk, I would have done something about it. It never reached my desk. When asked about Russia supplying arms to the Taliban, Trump said the U.S. did the same thing in Afghanistan, too. Well, we supplied weapons when they were fighting Russia, too. You know, when we were, when they were fighting with the Taliban when, yeah, in Afghanistan. It's a different era. Well, it's a different, I'm just saying, yes. But does we, that, no, no, I'm just saying we did that, too. The president also making a major strategic move in Europe with you see what the president's saying? He's saying that whenever it comes to cutthroating, and you got to look at, at one country being, being essential in and of itself, kind of like a business, and whenever you have one business cutthroating another business for competition for various reasons, the president's sitting there telling you that we've done the exact same thing towards selling weapons to the enemy against the opposing forces that was fighting against Russia. So whenever you have all these different countries that's playing by the same game, burning the candle at both ends, you have a tendency of wondering just exactly who are we to trust, what are we to trust in these regards. Even the Pentagon is announcing right now of the removal or the uh, the uh, uh, realignment of over 12,000 troops that are going to be we we'll just listen to it drawing a third of US troops from Germany citing his long-standing gripe that Germany doesn't pay its fair share for defense in Europe we don't want to be the suckers anymore. 
There was bipartisan condemnation of the president's move. Those American troops in Germany have been the cornerstone of U.S. security in Europe for decades. Senator Mitt Romney calling the withdrawal a grave error and a slap in the face of a friend and ally. The Biden campaign blasted Trump in a statement saying the withdrawal does not reflect a thoughtful defense strategy. This is a gift to Vladimir Putin. David, nearly half of those 12,000 troops being pulled out of Germany, they'll be rotated to other parts of Eastern Europe. The Pentagon saying they'll help deter Russian aggression. But President Trump made crystal clear this is a lot more about punishing Germany than deterring Russia. David? All of this with the electioneering. Terry Moran, thank you tonight. We're to turn... See, once more, oh, what a tangled web we do weave when first we look and then we're deceived. I was under the first impression this morning whenever that news first hit hit the uh, public domain that they was going to bring the 12,000 troops back over here to America that was going to add insult to misery pertaining to the job, the labor force structure that is already strained the way that it is over here in America whenever you have 30 or 40 uh, million people that's without jobs and you're going to bring the military back over here. Well, where are you going to where are you going to put those men and women in, in in uniform in jobs? Are they going to take away the position or the opportunity of jobs that right now the citizens are already lurking for? I hope not, um, because whenever you look at peace and war in the eyes or the lenses of the eyes of of that perspective, you tend to have a tendency of wondering if war isn't as much of an asset as it is a liability whenever you look at it from that aspect and it's not that I'm promoting war and never will promote war and never have promoted war because the Bible speaks against war it Jesus' teachings said to be wise as serpents but harmless as doves but whenever you're dealing with with societies that are out of line and they're playing this game towards cutthroat cutthroat, 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 you tend to wonder where all this is heading towards and heading to even as Mr. Ben, uh, uh, the Bidens just got to saying that it was a strategy that wasn't well thought out. And you have a, a, a tendency of wondering that if, that if the punishment isn't as much towards one of our allies as it is of one of our opposing forces. So it gives out mixed messages, mixed signals to not only us, the Americans, but it gives out mixed messages to our allies and the other uh, abiding forces that are paying very, very close attention to what is going on in regards to the war versus peace, the peace versus war effort. Once more, when we're dealing with this type of aggression and resistance coming from these type of forces, we can expect anything to embark upon to our lives, kind of like the little woman that I know over in Kenton, Tennessee. And I know nobody wants to think that somebody would have actually been cruel enough to have done something like that, but I have heard of cases of the elderly senior citizens having to go through situations that was either just as horrifying or if not worse than what I explained about some dog food. If there's ever been a time that we needed to pray for each other and pray for strength and pray for wisdom and pray for unity and sovereignty, it is in these moments of darkness that we're now living in. I'm going to let this now play itself out and let my viewers watch what is going on in other matters other than just other than just in what we're fighting up against pertaining to supernatural forces in regards to a major accident that played itself out today on this bridge. Please watch. Next this evening to that partial bridge collapse in Arizona, the flames after a train carrying hazardous materials derailed. It happened in Tempe, the bridge partially collapsing there. Some of the cars falling as well. And ABC's Clayton Sandell is on the scene tonight. 
Tonight, the flaming freight train Inferno outside Phoenix, Arizona, derailing on a bridge in Tempe just after 6 this morning. Got a fire on the Mill Avenue train bridge. Well, you keep in mind, just the bridge itself to be replaced, you're probably talking about at least $200 million. Not counting the damage of the train, not counting the chemicals that's being released out into the atmosphere, you're looking at possibly a, a half a billion dollar mistake here after it's all said and done with that will be another blow to the city of Phoenix, Arizona in one form or the other and if it don't hit them on the front end if you don't want you to come back and hit them on the back end because stuff like this um, industrial accidents like this are very very costly and I'm surprised that there hasn't been human casualties in regarding this and there may have been. Part of that bridge collapsed a mess of twisted metal tracks and train cars falling into a park below nearly 100 firefighters raced to the scene as flames raced to engulf cars loaded with lumber grain and other products. The fire is traveling north along the train bridge which is making it extraordinarily difficult for our firefighters to fight. Union Pacific says tanker cars that fell off the bridge contain a hazardous and highly flammable chemical. The fire department says one tanker is leaking and is using heavy equipment to pull the car upright, stop the leak, and prevent another fire. As flames raged, a light rail passenger train on a nearby bridge slowly pushed its way through the smoke. Valley Metro Rail telling us it was safer for this final train to pass through than stop on the bridge. Federal investigators now working to figure out why the derailment happened. And David, uh, firefighters tell us that the chemical leaking from that tanker ignites very easily, which is what makes this such a delicate cleanup operation they say could last for days. And keep in mind, the crews are doing all of this work in the heat, temperatures hovering right around 110 degrees. David? Yes, still some very tough hours ahead. Clayton Sandell, thank you. Now to Minneapolis tonight. Authorities say they are now searching for a man that they allege is seen in a viral video smashing windows and inciting violence after the death of George Floyd. They say he is a white supremacist who wanted to fuel racial unrest. Here's Alex Perez. Tonight, authorities in Minneapolis say they have finally identified the man they claim incited days of violent protest there after George Floyd was killed. Dubbed the Umbrella Man on social media, he was captured in this viral video breaking windows at this auto zone, dressed in black, holding an umbrella. In a court filing this week, police identifying him as a white supremacist. Brad Svensson recorded the May 27th incident. It was strange because he was just casually walking through this war like space. According to court documents, the man also spray painted the words free expletive for everyone zone on the business's doors. Not long after, looting and fires began in the area, police say. An officer telling the court until Umbrella Man, the protests had been relatively peaceful. This individual's sole aim was to incite violence. After a tip, investigators zeroing in on the 32-year-old, police say also a known member of a whites-only motorcycle gang. And, David, investigators are working to obtain the man's cell phone location data. At this point, charges have not yet been filed. David? Alex Prez with us tonight. Alex, thank you. There are questions tonight after an arrest at a rally here in New York City by the NYPD's warrant squad. A team of plainclothes officers grabbing a woman and putting her in an unmarked car while bike cops held the crowd back. Witnesses recording it all. The NYPD tonight saying it was executing a warrant for the arrest of 18-year-old Nikki Stone seen in this video. Uh, they say vandalizing several surveillance cameras, she was booked and released. Witnesses say it was excessive. There is growing concern over sharks in the Northeast. Nine sightings in just two days, and it comes, of course, after that deadly attack. The wife and mother who did not survive. Here's Eva Pilgrim. Tonight, lifeguards auto... You got industrial accidents. You have wars. You have people being laid off. You have the COVID-19 pandemic. You have shark attacks. You have protests, violent protesters. 
and later on throughout the news you'll see or I may not be able to cover it on this particular broadcast but you'll see where there we have recently went through two hurricanes that hit the United States simultaneously at the same time one in Hawaii which didn't do a whole lot of damage and one down towards Brownsville Texas that done an extensive amount of damage that was considered to be only a category one hurricane but you have another hurricane right now that is aiming directly towards Florida once more we're under siege and if it's not coming in one form it's coming in another it's as if the very pits of hell have been opened up towards wanting to eradicate the Christian society off of this planet and if people don't wake up to what is occurring it's just a matter of time before not only is the sharks going to be attacking us but the bees and the mosquitoes and anything else out there that can wreak havoc upon to the homo sapien race. Alert and helicopters patrolling beaches near New York City after multiple days of shark sightings. At least three sightings today. I saw a fin of a shark. On Monday, lifeguards in Hempstead, New York spotted a shark near swimmers about five feet from shore. People were screaming and yelling a little bit, but the lifeguards did a great job of getting everyone out. The shark identified as a bull shark, which can weigh up to 500 pounds and grow to 11 feet. They're aggressive creatures, and the biggest concern is they go to the shoreline. The warnings in New York coming after 63-year-old Julie D'Imperio Holowak was attacked and killed by a great white shark in Maine Monday. Holowak was swimming in a wetsuit. Experts say the shark may have mistaken her for a seal. Shark attacks on humans are very rare, but they are a protected species and their numbers are growing. As it recovers, it's re-establishing its historic range. And when you mix that with the recovery of the seal and a lot more people in the water, now suddenly we look like their food and so occasionally they'll make a mistake. Users are watching at least 16 tagged sharks right off the coast here of New York. At least 10 of those are great white sharks. David? Lori, right, thank you. When we come back here tonight, there's news just coming in on tomorrow's funeral, the service for the late Representative John Lewis. We have learned who will deliver the eulogy and the former presidents who will be there. And, of course, more on that tropical threat now moving toward the east. So maybe I am going to be able to get the hurricane. That's now just a tropical storm. See, just a quick flare up of it right there. And it's easy to pay. Congressman and civil rights icon John Lewis has returned to Georgia tonight, lying in repose in the state capitol. His funeral tomorrow, we have learned tonight, former President Obama will deliver the eulogy. Former Presidents Bill Clinton and George W. Bush will also be there. ABC News will carry the service live at 11 a.m., and I'll be there for a special edition of World News Tonight. When we come back, two young sisters with something special in the kitchen. Going backwards. Going to look at the... Right. Passing near Puerto Rico at this hour, then Florida. Heavy rains and gusty winds, a 90% chance of this becoming a tropical storm. Look at the track tonight. It shows it on course for southern Florida. 50, 45, 45, 50, 60. I mean, that's, that's playing right into the cards of what it has done in the past. Um, I'm sure the water temperatures are very favorable towards uh, initiating some sort of hurricane. I don't know if it's going to be a moderate hurricane or a major hurricane, but the fact of the matter is the bottom line is this. We're under siege. We're under attack. Last week there was two hurricanes. One hit Brownsville, Texas, over towards Corpus Christi, down on the lower part of Texas, and another one hit Hawaii. The odds of one hitting Hawaii is slim to none. Slim to none. But now we got another one building, okay? Out of all the other problems 
people is going to have to learn to put these dots together in understanding what's going on here. They're going to have to wake up if we're going to survive as a entity pertaining to the United States of America. Just like the shark attack. Okay? You got a helicopter guy out there riding around. You think he's riding around for free? You're paying that helicopter guy probably a hundred dollars an hour just to fly the helicopter. The helicopter alone probably burns up 500 gallons of fuel. A thousand dollar worth of fuel every hour. Plus, you're putting wear and tear on probably a what, a two million dollar piece of equipment? So you think all this stuff is free? All this stuff costs money whenever you engage in, in problems. And it doesn't matter if it's hurricane problems, shark problems, flooding problems, industrial accident problems, uh, epidemic problems, or, or people losing their job problems. These things all cost lots and lots of money. Just like the wars. When are we as a society going to wake up in understanding what we're truly up against here? Please pray for each other and pray for our leaders. Thank you for listening. Good luck to all of us. And once more as we talk on every program, Shalom. Looks like after Saturday, Friday or Saturday of this week, then we'll know more about the trajectory of this thing and whether or not it becomes a hurricane or if it's just going to remain a tropical depression or if it's going to remain, if it's going to turn into a uh, major ordeal. That's a lot of territory right there. I'm going to say from there, from over there, it's probably 2,000 miles or maybe further. That's a lot of territory. So that storm can do lots of things between Thursday at 2 o'clock and Saturday at 2 o'clock, which is in a stretch of 72 hours.